right up here, behind these cypress trees, you will see the crypt for Charles M. Weber. A big circular area here, surrounded by all kinds of old tombstones. So imagine a California in the 1840s, completely untamed, more land than there are people, and now it's hard to imagine because California is about 40 million people. But imagine a time in which California was completely wide open, totally open for exploration, hardly settled. Uh, we're going to talk about a German immigrant who basically converted this part of California into a booming port city. We're talking about Stockton, California. On this episode of History Hunters, I'll tell you all about Charles M. Weber. He was basically the primary founder of Stockton. Although he didn't name the town after himself, he actually named it after Commodore Robert Stockton, who helped wrestle California from Mexico. So right here is the mausoleum of the Weber family. As you can see up there, it has a date of 1911 on it, but Captain Weber died of pneumonia on May 4th, 1881. He acquired over 48,000 acres through a Mexican land grant and founded Stockton in 1849. He arrived in California as part of the celebrated Bidwell Bartleson Company coming over the Sierra Nevada range. In 1841, some Americans in the East hungered to occupy the vast Mexican territory that would shortly become part of the United States. Among those who wanted to travel west was German immigrant Carl David Weber, who would change his name to Charles Maria Weber after he reached California. The Bidwell Bartleson party would make history as the first successful planned overland immigrant journey to California. The trek began in Missouri and was more difficult than imagined. Led by John Bidwell, the group traveled by wagon train along the Oregon Trail, passing by landmarks so it had become familiar to those in the annals of westward migration. The courthouse and jail rocks, Chimney Rock, Scott's Bluff, Fort Laramie, and Independence Rock. On August 11th, 1841, part of the group broke off at Soda Springs, Idaho to make the safer trek to Oregon. The rest followed the route suggested by Dr. John Marsh, an early California settler who encouraged those in the East to colonize California. Marsh invited immigrants, including the Bidwell Bartleson party, to stay on his ranch until they could get settled and assisted in their obtaining passports. By August night, the group crossed Mary's River and headed west to Lake Humboldt, the Humboldt Sink and the Carson Sink. While traveling through the mountain passes, the travelers nearly starved to death, but by late October passed down the Stanislaus River Canyon to the San Joaquin Valley. On November 4th, 1841, the party made it to Marsh's Ranch near Brentwood. Weber tried gold mining, but realized the opportunities lay in providing for gold seekers from all over the world. Charles Weber promptly went to Sutter's Fort in Sacramento, where he learned how John Sutter obtained a vast land grant from the Mexican government and wanted to do the same. Weber focused on the vista of the Central Valley near the Delta, which he had seen when crossing the San Joaquin River. In 1842, Weber moved to San Jose and became a business partner of Guillermo Golnack to operate a corn mill, bakery, and a blacksmith shop. Gwolnack owned a 48,000-acre ranch in San Joaquin County on the Delta at the confluence of the San Joaquin and Calaveras Rivers. He sold the entire ranch to Weber in 1845 for just $60 worth of groceries and a white horse. On the outbreak of the Mexican War, Weber persuaded a number of people to settle on his land for protection. He became a captain in the U.S. Cavalry. After California became part of the United States, Weber laid out a town on his wide expanse. Originally, Weber wanted to name his new town Tuleyburg after the prevalent tule grass in the area, but the town was also known by its nicknames of Brick City, Mudville, and Weberville. Reportedly, Weber enlisted the help of Commodore Stockton, the leader of the American military in California that was not a state at the time, to protect Tuleyburg. In appreciation of the Commodore's help, Tuleyburg was renamed Stockton in 1850. It became the first city in California to receive a name that was not in Spanish. Now, the city of Stockton was officially incorporated on July 23, 1850. Stockton's charter from the state of California dates from 1851. By 1854, Stockton was the fourth largest city in California. 
1850, Weber married Helen Murphy, and they moved to a house that he built on what would become known as Weber Point. They raised three children, Charles Martin Weber, Julia Helen Weber, and Thomas Jefferson Weber. On the outside, you'll also find some other members of the Weber family who passed away more recently. Gertrude Weber, 2017. And there's a John Frederick Weber, who died in 2008. Charles Weber is right behind this slab of granite. Looks like a homeless person's had a uh, hot and ready pizza here. There are three Charles Webbers interred in this mausoleum, the first being Captain Weber on the left side of this structure. Charles died in 1881, which means his body was once interred elsewhere until this structure was completed in 1911. Beneath his body are the remains of his wife, Helen Murphy Weber, who died at the age of 73 in 1895. On the mausoleum's right half is son Charles Martin Weber, who lived from 1851 to 1912. He dabbled in real estate and other commercial ventures in Stockton. On the left is grandson Charles M. Weber III, who was a civil engineer who served in the California State Assembly from 1927 to 1943. In 1966, he built the Weber's Town Mall in Stockton. When U.S. Senator Robert Kennedy made a May 30, 1968 campaign stop in Stockton, he was introduced to Charles Weber III, saying here shaking Kennedy's hand. The presidential candidate later visited his Weber's Town Mall. Six days after this handshake, Robert Kennedy would be shot to death in Los Angeles. On the right side are the remains of Julia Helen Weber, a well-off socialite of Stockton. She never married and traveled extensively. She died in 1935. Others entombed here are Charles Martin Weber's daughter, Helen Weber Kennedy, and her husband, Gerald D. Kennedy, a Stockton banker. In the top crypt on the left side is the youngest son of Captain Weber, Thomas Jefferson Weber, a mentally troubled soul. He was only 36 years old when he passed away in 1892. After being married for only three months, Thomas came home to Stockton suffering a nervous breakdown, telling his mother, I have come home to die. Weber was born in Germany in 1814. His father wanted him to become a minister, but health ended his college pursuit. He went straight into the mercantile business. He decided to go to America with a cousin in 1836. His intent was to join up with relatives who was a judge in New Orleans, but his plans changed. Charles contracted yellow fever in 1837. He recovered and went to Texas, where he served under Sam Houston against the Mexicans. Now, at the time that Weber ended up here in this area, this was part of Mexico, and he figured that eventually Mexico was going to be taken over by the United States. He thought that the San Joaquin River was going to be the dividing line between Mexico and the United States. He saw the port of Stockton as being a very important shipping location. And it was also the dropping off place where a lot of people would come in from San Francisco. They'd float up the Delta. They would get off at Stockton. They would get on horses or stages and head on up to the gold mining regions east of here, up in the Sierra Nevada. He was well positioned to take care of the city of Stockton. As you can imagine, with thousands of people coming in from all parts of the country seeking gold and fortune, that he would make a fortune himself selling gold pans and picks and shovels and all kinds of supplies to those people. So Charles Weber was a patriot, and during the Civil War, he was on the Union side. He had a flagpole on Banner Island, very close to his house. It was 120 feet tall, and he ran Old Glory up there. Well, one night, some Confederate sympathizers went up there and replaced the flag with the Confederate flag and killed his favorite watchdog, who was on that island to protect the flag. He was indignant. He got the rebel flag off the flagpole. He jammed it down into the mouth of a cannon and he blasted it off as a sign that he did not appreciate what took place. Charles Weber was a generous man. He gave all this property here for the Catholic cemetery. He also gave freely to charity purposes. He also gave a lot of the land for the streets that now form the city of Stockton. He was also very protective of his property at Weber Point. In fact, he was known to shoot at trespassers. There was a property dispute with Weber. And he was being served by a Judge Heslip one night in 1863. 
he was out in the back porch of his house smoking a cigar. He saw this dark figure coming into the yard and he decided to take a shot at him. Well, he shot the judge. He didn't kill the judge. Weber found out that he was wanted for the shooting. He decided to turn himself in. The court case against him was dismissed because it was an accident. However, Judge Heslip sued him and got a judgment for $30,000, which today is the equivalent of about $615,000. Don't know the extent of the judge's injuries, but it must have been pretty severe for him to receive such a high amount of a settlement. So the sad truth about the end of Charles Weber's life is that he became a very eccentric and miserable individual. A friend, J.T. August, said of Weber, he never laughed and scarcely ever smiled. He never attended any kind of amusements, lectures, theaters, or even church. Hubert Bancroft, a California historian who disliked Weber because he would not submit to an interview, claimed that Stockton's founder was eccentric to the verge of insanity, morbidly sensitive, avoiding his fellow man. Some historians think that he was depressed. He liked to stay in his study and read. He didn't hardly want anything to do with his family. So his wife had just had enough of him. Instead of divorcing him, she moved over to San Jose. His wife later wrote that Weber had an icy soul. So who knows what was going on in this great man's life. So this is one of the most historic spots in Stockton. This is where Charles Weber lived, it's a Weber Point. It's a point that juts out. There was all kinds of development around here, stores. This is part of Stockton that is probably the most historic and there's really nothing here. He kept a good view of all the steamers that were coming in from San Francisco. All the travel and people were going to the gold fields. They came up the river and they stopped here in Stockton. Mr. Weber had stores around here and he became quite profitable in selling all kinds of goods to people who were trying to make a fortune and going up to the gold fields. Mr. Weber's house was out here. His daughter also lived out there and she lived in a pretty elaborate mansion. For that time she was pretty set financially until the rest of her life. I believe she died in 1935. But this was a bustling place at one time with stores up and down the waterfront here. I told you earlier about him shooting a cow and shooting a judge. It occurred out there, Weber Point. The original Weber adobe was too far gone for saving and it returned to the earth. However, the cottage, which was primarily used as a kitchen, was saved and moved to the San Joaquin County Historical Museum. The redwood used in this cottage was imported from the Santa Cruz Mountains, shipped by wagon to the port of Redwood City, and then by boat to Stockton. In 1892, Julia and brother Charles built a large house on Weber's Point next to their father's 1850 adobe and redwood house, which was crumbling from the effects of time and flood damage. However, by 1900, Weber Point was becoming run down and Julia wanted out. So she moved her two-story house three miles into the country on West Lane. There she maintained a farm where she grew fruit and barley for export to England to make beer. When she died, her niece Helen and husband moved into the house. The home was moved in 2001 to the San Joaquin Historical Museum in Stockton, where it is now preserved. In case you're wondering, Robert F. Stockton is buried nowhere near Stockton, California. To see his crypt, you would have to visit the cemetery in Princeton, New Jersey. So I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the city of Stockton's founding and how Charles Weber played a heavy role in that. We always would appreciate a comment. We always like to hear what you're thinking about what you see. We'd also appreciate a thumbs up. Doing that helps YouTube promote our channel to others and we are seeking to expand our channel success. So we want to thank you so much. Mm -hmm.